welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast, technically in Chicago, still pretty far east of me. Uh, but we are t- looking at our Christmas Day NBA games here. It is Friday as we record this, uh, but we want to go ahead and get ahead of the Sunday Christmas Day lines. Got about four games we're bringing you, as well as our player props. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Check out all the Christmas action we're bringing your way. Also, head to thelines.com. That's where we have our great written content for you guys all season long and our odds finder tool you can go ahead and use that to make sure you're getting the best juice back shop those lines across u.s sports books uh nate let's get into this five day christmas day slate and then our first game that we're talking about here the knicks are playing host to the 76ers yeah and we're reading the lines to you as of friday everybody in the nba basically playing on friday so things might adjust uh if there's injury news or if teams look particularly good or bad in those games um like you said, stay on top of it. But we got Sixers minus two and a half at the Knicks, total of 219, followed by Lakers plus seven and a half at the Mavs, 226 total. The Bucks plus four at Celtics, 223 is the total. Memphis minus four at the Warriors, and that's 227. And that the only game we're not going to break down for you because. Lord knows we don't know what's going to happen with the Suns lately. Uh, plus three Phoenix at Denver, and that totals at the 230. So, <clears throat> I mean, the first game of the day here, it's going to be a noon start at Madison Square Garden. Uh, generally, things are a little sleepy when NBA players are asked to play at noon on a Sunday, uh, especially on relatively short rest as they played Friday night. So we have seen some unders for sure lately, uh, both these teams, when they've played on Christmas Day. Uh, we've seen a lot of unders lately in general from the Knicks because they've been playing elite defense, 2-6 uh, to the under during their eight-game win streak. Then they went slightly, slightly over because Pascal Siakam just went nuts to end that win streak on Wednesday. Um, look, I mean, you can have a great defensive scheme and, and a great team scheme, but one guy can just break that. And I mean, Joel Embiid is, you know, the guy to introduce to, to that situation to say, you have no answers for him. Uh, The last time he visited MSG at 37 points and shot 27 free throws and fouled out Mitchell Robinson. So he cannot handle him on his own. Harden had a big triple double in that game. Also shot 10 free throws. Um, I mean, right now the Knicks are doing an excellent job limiting free throws. Limiting points in the paint, although they did give up 48 to Toronto. Limiting fast break points as well. And the Sixers are playing elite defense as well. Um, They've won six straight, but all were at home. 103 defensive rating, um, holding opponents to 31% from three and the highest turnover rate as well during that span. And then their offense, very efficient from three. I kind of look at the discrepancy uh, both at the free throw line and from beyond the arc as the biggest reason to, to favor the Sixers. And a lot of that is Embiid just tipping the scales of the floor, right? Where you can't handle him one-on-one. Uh, where Harden's playing pretty well as a creator as well to get guys open. And and those guys, while, while not Tyrese Maxey, I mean, Tobias Harris has stepped up as a great catch-and-shoot guy. De'Anthony Melton is a great fit as a catch-and-shoot guy. P.J. Tucker, all he does is catch-and-shoot. Uh, they've, you know, they've settled into their roles, everybody on this Philly team, and that's – you know, to play around those two, the two man game, get ready to shoot, and then go back and play elite defense. So I think the combination of those things, they've hit their stride. We've seen the Knicks not really be able to get it done against the best of the best. And Philly now is back in that conversation with Milwaukee and Boston as, and Brooklyn. Uh, let's, let's not count on Brooklyn right now. As, as the best teams in the East, they're playing very well on both sides of the ball. So at minus two, or three, where where it might settle at, uh, I definitely would take the Sixers here. Yeah, I, I think that's a good starting point. You you kind of hit on the end there that the Knicks don't really play well against the top competition. Um, a lot of stuff we talked about during their win streak was going ten and four at that point in the season straight up when they are favored. Uh, so when they're favored, they, they, they handle business uh, regardless of what that spread is when they're not favored at home, especially they are one in three against that spread. They're failing to cover by like six points. Um, they, they just don't do quite as well when uh, against these top tier teams and, and these top tier teams uh, in the East, you know, I, I was a little bit worried about that Raptors game just from the standpoint of not only the Knicks being on a win streak and, 
it having to come to an end, but the Raptors being on a losing streak and that needing to come to an end as well. And I think they had a lot to play for there. I would say the same about the Sixers. I'm not saying that they're like, they're, they're not in the tank. They've actually, they're on that win streak uh, that you're talking about here uh, ever since they got James Harden back. Um, but they are in a place where, you know, they need to win a few more games to feel good about where they are in the standings. I would say that, right. Um, the, the offense has been there for them since Harden came back. And, and that's usually the, the biggest difference that, that we've seen this season. Um, they, they are six and one since he came back. That's when the streak started. They had that one, uh, stupid random loss that I guess everybody's going to get one this season where you go to Houston and lose, even if you're one of the best teams in the league, that was what happened with Philly. Um, and then since then, you know, it's the 116 and a half offensive rating. Uh, so they're scoring 116 points per 100 possessions with James Harden. They're scoring 106 without him, right? So 10, 10 points per 100 worse. Uh, that's why they've been, you know, hitting uh, their totals uh, as of late and especially on the road, as you said, as well, where the defense is a little bit worse uh, for, for them, which is huge uh, in terms of what you can expect from the Knicks. I would also look for, I believe, Quentin Grimes. Uh, I know we're still two days out, so we're trying to play like injury, but Quentin Grimes is day to day. Don't sleep on how important he's been for them since that streak started uh, in terms of being another three-point shooter which is really the key thing I mean the, the thing that he's bringing uh that he has that, that hasn't been there when you've got guys like Derek Rose and Evan Fournier playing is the ability to shoot from deep uh consistently so he, he's if he's not in as well I, I don't like their ability to hang with Philly nearly as much I know that sounds like a random guy to throw out there but he's been super important for them uh since this streak started so has Mitchell Robinson and he's him coming back and getting into form has been the reason that they've been the best defensive team in the league on top of you know guys stepping up and, and not playing old guys that can't hang anymore on defense still love you D Rose it's just he's he's not playing he can't play great D anymore um with that said Mitch Robb is so important to what they do on defense and their defensive rating with and without him on the floor and it's stark contrast um but he's neutralized by uh the force that is Joel Embiid so I don't know that you can rely like you said they gave up those 48 paint points to, to Toronto and that has been a calling card for them is that they've been able to get out on threes and defend those to the tune of like 27 percent because they're giving up the fewest contested threes during that win streak um and, and that's because of the fact that they feel so comfortable with Mitchell Robinson standing behind them even Julius Randle who's been who's been putting more effort on defense having a bit more size out there they felt great about it like I said that, that all gets neutralized when you're talking about Joel Embiid, the way that he's had success against Mitchell Robinson. And sometimes you think there's going to be, uh, you know, you, you like to bet on, against Embiid when he finally has actual competition on the defensive side of the ball. But at the same time, that seems to be when he comes up and decides that he wants to just punish people. As we, as you said, when he's in the garden, he's one of these guys that, as we know, he loves himself. He's full of himself. And that's the exact type of player that you, you expect to go the hell off at MSG on Christmas. So I think you can expect that from Joel once again. Yeah, I mean, the Knicks have been able to defend the three-point line against most teams, but not in their last three meetings against Philly, who's getting three, 13 threes a game at 35%. They're also getting 33 free throw attempts, like I said. Um, I mean, you do lean slightly towards the over by the numbers based yeah. on the six points higher defensive rating for Philly, based on the Knicks having nowhere to go but regress defensively after their incredible hot, hot streak on that end. Um, and, the, and their defensive rating jumps seven points in their last six at home when they gave up one, one thirteen to Toronto. So I, I do lean a little bit towards the over, but I, I think you, you kind of steer away from that. It being a noon game, trying to predict how the game flow is going to go um, and, and just take the Sixers. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there might be some, some props that we like as those are made available when we even kind of know a hundred percent who's playing. As you said, there's two teams not playing in the NBA on Friday night. Uh, that's just the jazz and the warriors. Everybody else is playing. So there's a ton of people uh, playing who we expect them to play on Sunday, but the rare injury, random guys getting sat. I, I don't think Adam Silver is going to be letting teams sit people. I've got to imagine there was a little uh, company wide email that was like, yo, your best players can't sit on Christmas. Like that's why we pay for these games. So, uh, Expect as many people out there as possible, as long as they're not hurt. So that is all the time we have in this one. Got a couple other game videos up for Christmas and our player props. So continue to follow along with us. And until we see you next, happy betting.